Christina, your sister, Pashan, uh, began working in Amazon's coronavirus testing area. And I'm sorry to have to go through this again with you, but just describe for the audience if they don't know. Your si you had left at this point, but your sister was still there. What was she doing in the coronavirus testing area, which she started in at this Virginia warehouse uh, in the fall? What was she doing? Well, they call it safety, it's some type of safety up, safety top, but it's pretty much the COVID-19. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's broken down and it's uh, broken down, uh, but it's safety slash COVID-19. Uh, COVID um, she was coming in and she was trained by another worker to do um, uh, COVID testing, the swabs on employees um, that thought that they had been exposed or felt symptoms of COVID-19. Also, I think they had just started recently testing the drivers because before it was just the Amazon employees, but well, pretty much she was um, she was trained from another employee to um, do COVID testing, the swab um, employees and um, Amazon workers, whatever, whoever was in the warehouse who felt that they had been exposed or had symptoms of COVID. So, and she went down. so let's be clear, your sister, and my understanding, other uh, people working in that warehouse, they, who probably didn't make much more than $15 an hour, mm -hmm. did your sister have any medical training to be involved with coronavirus testing? Was she a nurse, a doctor, anything? No, she was not a nurse or doctor. She had a degree in human resources, but other than that, that was it. Um, she was never, never went to medical school. She wasn't even a health A, a CNA, none of those such. So she was uh, administering COVID nasal swabs. And uh, I, there are other workers at the warehouse who have told you they saw her uh, testing coworkers. Amazon, okay. to be clear, and we'll get into this a little bit later, Amazon won't touch this story. They will not speak with me on the record. They will not answer any questions pertaining to Pashan's death. They will not explain on the record what Pashan was doing in this COVID testing area. They will not answer whether she was or was not administering the tests herself. They will not answer why does Amazon, which if you don't know, in 2020 reached a trillion dollars as a company, a trillion dollar market cap, why Amazon had workers involved in coronavirus testing rather than doctors nurses. They won't touch it. They originally said, uh, we'll speak with you off the record. I told them, we're I'm not going to talk to you off the record. And then they continue, you know, they won't touch it likely because the, the national media is not picking this story up. So they're just hoping, yeah. it, you know, it's, it dies. That's why they don't want to comment on the record yeah. frankly, because, you know, could be some yeah, legal. Nobody's not talking. No one's, no one's not talking about it. And what's, what's, What's the most upsetting part about it is this is that I want people to understand it's not anybody that's no one's not bashing Amazon. We're just stating the facts. And the, the fact of this is that she worked at Amazon for four years. She wasn't a fly by night employee. She worked at Amazon through the whole pandemic until the day she died in the COVID testing department. She worked at Amazon Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. COVID testing employees and at the end of the day at the end of the day if i had my own company and i'm not talking about if i was a millionaire billionaire trillionaire if i had my own company and i had an employee who worked to the day she died and dropped dead and that was in a department in a facility doing something she had no business doing i would be concerned i would want to know i will reach out to say let me see what happened let me clear my name up let me clear my company's name up jordan you have your own business you have your own company if a reporter or a journalist came in there and where you where you where you work at where you record at and drop dead or passed out wouldn't you want to know what happened wouldn't you want to know absolutely so at the end of the day no one's not talking about it and i want to just say facts the fact is this is that no one in that building is not doctors. No one in there should have been, should be, should never been have COVID testing anyone at the end of the day. My 
sister was not a doctor nor a nurse. She was a simple Amazon worker who started off as a driver and who worked her way through every shift in that warehouse. And I and I don't know if they watch, if they are looking, but I, I Jeff, I just want Jeff to know that my sister loved working for your company before everything happened. She loved working for your company. She came in early. She came, she stayed late. She loved working for your company. She worked every shift in that warehouse. And there are multiple shifts in that warehouse. She worked every shift in that warehouse. She worked from 9 a.m. to 3 to 4.45 in the morning, full time, from part time. But she was so happy. She was so happy. She jumped up. She was so happy. She sent me a picture. She took pictures. She loved working for your company. You understand that? And then when the pandemic came, it was the, the work just got, it got harder. It, it was coming faster. She didn't complain. She was concerned about her health. She complained for the first time about issues, about employees in the warehouse being sick, about people being sick. And she only complained is because our mother. So at the end of the day, I, I don't know if you knew my sister. I don't know if you heard of my sister, Jeff. I don't know if you know. I don't know if the people in Seattle know that you had a employee, a diehard employee for you that worked for you to the day that she died. And I would at least think that somebody... And I'm not and I'm not talking about HR. I'm talking about the big folks. I'm talking about the head folks in Seattle would reach out and say, what can we do for you? How can we help you? We so, know that she was not a doctor. We know that that, that she was not she, she was not a nurse. We should not have had her in there doing that. She had no business in there doing that. I want to I want to get to a couple things that we've learned. Number one, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you. I want I want you to explain to the audience um, mm -hmm. when your sister passed away, by the way, she was 38 years old. And she left, unfortunately, a 12-year-old daughter. Yes, sir. Uh, Gabrielle. Uh, you had reached out to HR. Uh, you had worked with your sister, so you knew, you know, HR there. And you had asked Amazon mm -hmm. if they could help um, pay for an autopsy. Again, I don't know if she had coronavirus. You don't know if she had coronavirus. So we're not saying she did, but we know she was working in the coronavirus testing center. So you had asked Amazon, Amazon for help to pay for an autopsy, can you can you say, uh, you know, what did they say when you asked that? Well, I had, well, I had called the, the because at that time I didn't know until, I didn't know the exact um, number. Uh, per, I got a personal cell phone after they had called and found out and was asking why my sister wasn't at work. But when I was calling the, the, the employee hotline, the, the regular number, I called them. I called them three times. I, it was, um, don't quote me, it was either three times, maybe three and a half times. And then when they reached out to me from, um, I don't want to say any names, when a person reached out to me, I was thinking, they, they I, was, I thought that they already knew. They were like, oh, well, we just wanted to know why she wasn't at work. And then I told them what happened. And I told them, I got in touch with that person two times. And I, I was like, you know, is there anything that you guys can do? Because we didn't have money for an autopsy. We wanted to know. And also funeral. And I was told we would get back. We will, let me see what we can do, and we'll get back. And I never got it, got back to until the 28th of January. Um, and it was, I believe, it was the 28th of January. And that's when I don't, I don't want to, I want to make sure I state the facts. It was, the, it was the last week of January, the first week of February, and that's when I was got back to. I was told that um, I was told that they, they, they're sorry for my loss, and that they will offer. Um, me, my mom, and my niece, um, two months of counseling that expires next month. And um, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's ever lost anybody. Sometimes it takes you two months just to realize that, that person's not coming back. Sometimes it takes you longer than that. So, I mean. And I want to, um, I want to, when they reached out, they didn't, they didn't say why they, they didn't ask nothing. They didn't ask what happened. They just said, sorry for your loss. And, you know, we can offer you two months of counseling that it will expire April, 2021. Go ahead, Jordan. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. I, uh, by the way, we're going to get to the complaints that we learned, uh, Pashan had made to HR, but I want to, I want to just go a little further. Okay. Um, I want to go a little further into what you had to deal with after your sister died you're already grieving. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a mother who has some health problems. She's paralyzed mm -hmm. from the waist down. She's a diabetic. She is, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but obviously extremely yeah. depressed. 
and you had called Amazon uh, to find out if Pashan had life insurance with the company. Can you, can you explain how that call went when you called Amazon, uh, Amazon Seattle headquarters? So not, not the local warehouse that she had worked in, but this, the national corporate headquarters, uh, when you called, what happened? Well, they said that, well, it was definitely Seattle because the warehouse that she worked in, they're not, they're no longer talking anymore. They're not doing anything. Um, they said that um they couldn't release any information and um we had to they, could, they i think they, they thought that she was still alive and that was the craziest thing and then after about we stayed the whole phone conversation was almost an hour i think 47 minutes i think that they thought she was still alive and then when we explained to them what happened then they said that they needed a next of kin and i said well that's that is me and they said that I was down for emergency contact, but also my niece was. And I said, well, she doesn't have anything to do with this. So they proceeded to, I, I told, I told, I was ready to hang up the phone. My mother, on the other hand, on the other hand, who wanted to see it through, she had them, um, she, my, my niece got on the phone and they proceeded to ask her questions that she didn't know. She doesn't know. She knows, she knows, you know, her mom's birthday, but. She doesn't know the year her mom was born. She doesn't know her social security number. She didn't even know hers. She they were asking her all of these things and she had just got frustrated. And How we old had is just you? talked. How old is your niece? Um she's 12 years old. And we had just talked to the counselor about not putting her in situations to where right now she's still trying to compress things. We all are. If I can't even compress it as an adult, how can she to not put her in situations to let things go with the flow? So that was traumatic for her, and she broke down. And after that, she went. She she broke down. Her whole day was over. And this happened, I think, at twelve o'clock noon. I just mm -hmm. want to be clear. Amazon Corporate in Seattle asked your twelve-year-old niece to get on the phone and provide her mother's birthday, social security number, and the date that she died, even though you had told them you are her legal guardian, and she doesn't know that information. Absolutely. And that that was against the law to speak to a child, to speak to a minor who you have. That's you can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm her. I am. I am her next of everything. There's already been paperwork, everything established. So why would you what what, what does she have to do with anything? And it just it, it, that upset me. I was upset for that a whole week because at the end of the day, it's about it's about her and it's about having her get through this the best way that she can, because, you know, I know I, I, it's not a second that don't go by. I don't think about my sister. So I know she thinks about her mother every day, all day, all day. And I want to just tell everyone, cause you know, Amazon won't speak to me, but if this story ever got attention, they would likely deny that this happened. So I could tell you, uh, Christina, who I'm speaking to right now had called me while this was going on. So I heard it. I didn't record it because unfortunately Washington state where Seattle, uh, Amazon is located, is a two-party consent state. So both parties have to con consent to recording a conversation. But I was on the call towards the end. I did hear it. I did hear the Amazon corporate headquarters person mm -hmm. explain to you that this is our process, which really doesn't make sense. I mean, common mm -hmm. sense. Why would you ask a grieving 12-year-old to get on the phone and give this information about? Well, yeah, that 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 day was a whole action movie because we had actually got hung up on four times that day and i was actually upstairs and i heard the second time that my mom got hung up on that's when i came down because i told her just forget it leave it alone at this point it doesn't matter like we have to I, I, we, it, it's just let let it go you see what's happening you see what's going on just let it go but she had gotten hung up on and I have, I, well, I mean, you were there. I, had, I don't want to say names, but I took the information down of the people who did that. And I mean, I mean. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh, <laughs>